What's up, everybody? In today's stream, we are going to talk about Night Game, okay? Game at bars and clubs. Uh, when I first started off in the game, this is pretty much all that existed, okay? There was no Tinder yet. Online game was not popular yet. And I'm really thankful for that because I was forced to learn and master cold approach. Okay, now a lot of guys in the modern day think that they can uh, just do online, okay, and, and just be content with online. However, I promise you there are going to be huge holes in your game overall. And learning cold approach is going to make the rest of the game a lot easier. Okay, so you have to learn cold approach. There's no way around it. It's going to make your your frame control really good, your calibration really good, your ability to objection handle and deal with any situation. Okay, so it's going to hone all that stuff. And it's going to build massive EXP points because you're going to run into every type of situation. Okay, my first 400 girls were mostly night game, cold approach. Um, so where do we where do we begin? Okay. You want to select the venues that have the most people. Okay, so you have to find out which venues in your city have the largest capacity. Then you also need to know on off nights, what are the best places to go? Okay, on a Tuesday, where's the happy hour specials? Where's the ladies night specials? Okay, where's the you know, special events, so on and so forth. Where does everyone go in your city on a Tuesday? Where does everyone go in your city on a Wednesday? Where does everyone go in your city on a Thursday? And for each city, there's going to be certain places where most people are going. And you have to know that, okay? And you can find that out by befriending promoters and bouncers and, you know, just doing some research online. Um, you should plan to be out for, you know, close to the opening time through the end of the night okay oh actually quick announcement uh rsd alex who is now former formerly rsd alex who is now uh alex four week natural alex social he emailed me today and said he is quitting dating coaching let's get a round of applause for that he, he was pumping misinformation out into the space with his bullshit concepts about four times reapproaching rule and not being able to pull in the first half of the night, which is totally bullshit. There's just a different strategy. Um, and he's like, oh, you should uh, remove this video you made on me because I'm cleaning up my online presence. And I said, no. And he's like, well, he said he's going to copyright strike it and, and damage my channel. I said, go ahead and try. Request for content moderation. He said, uh, it's an infringement of copyright sampling my videos at this timestamp and this timestamp on my video about him. And no, it's not. <clears throat> I responded, those clips certainly do fall under fair use as they were once displayed on YouTube. That makes them subject to fair use. I had our lawyer on staff review. He concurs. It does not matter that you have since deleted or private the videos because they were public on YouTube at one time. Think about how, like, people are so fucking dumb. He's just trying to use intimidation and bullying to get those clips removed because they make him look bad. Um, and RSD notoriously did this kind of shit for years. He's not with them anymore. They fired him, and he admitted to crying on the plane ride home uh, like a pussy. But imagine, like, <clears throat> imagine you had a popular creator and a bunch of people made reaction videos to his content. And then he deleted all those videos. And then he said, hey, this isn't fair use anymore because I deleted those videos. I'm going to copyright strike your channel. And first of all, how would that person even know those videos are deleted? Second of all, they automatically become fair use since they were public at one time. Um, so fuck him. And I also said in my response, <clears throat> your email shows your intent to abuse the copyright system. I promise you I'll respond with swift and full legal action against you and your company. If you attempt to put an unwarranted copyright strike on my channel to damage my business, I aggressively defend it at all times. And then I said, I ask you to reflect. This is to RSD Alex. 
I said, I ask you to reflect on the extreme amounts of pain and suffering you caused men globally by being part of Owen Cook's cult and peddling products that only perpetuated guys' dating problems. You also also should reflect on what a joke it was for you to be a self-proclaimed inner game coach, constantly professing that there's no reason you're not enough when you were a broke alcoholic living out of a van, being suicidal and attempting to kill yourself. That's all facts. And being in tons of debt, which I didn't mention. You posted public pictures in a bathtub crying with the caption, I'm sad, and even announced that you cried on the plane ride home after being fired from RSD. I'm glad to hear you're retiring as you were a terrible role model and you pushed game advice that was plain wrong. Four times reapproach, long interactions, can't pull in the first half of the night. What a joke. I pulled as much <clears throat> in the first half of the night as I did in the second half. It's just a different strategy. The amount of damage you and your loser friends did to men is astonishing. I teach an optimized system that is industry leading. That's why I'm currently at 1,717 lay count and you're a broke loser quitting teaching and living out of a van. Um, all right. So that's an update there. Um, all right. Back to night game training. Actually, we can tie that into my, my response to RSD Alex there. He was saying that you can't pull in the first half of the night. Okay. And so you shouldn't even bother trying. That's complete misinformation. Information, okay, you can pull any girl at any time, regardless if it's the first set of the night or the thirtieth. Okay, it doesn't matter if it's ten p.m. or if it's two a.m. The time of the night is irrelevant. The the uh, you know which which girl it is in the order that you've talked to is irrelevant. You should look at every interaction in a vacuum, and you should be thinking from a a one shot one kill mentality, meaning any girl given good enough logistics and enough compliance aka enough dtf level okay to be with you sexually means you can pull her okay so you're you're trying to make a real-time probabilistic assessment of can i beat these logistics and is the girl down enough which is like a general read on her overall compliance level those are the two factors you're considering you don't give a shit if it's the first girl you talk to, you don't give a shit if it's the only girl in the bar. I don't give a shit if you've ran into 30 rejections in a row and there's one more girl there at the end of the night. Those 30 rejections before don't matter. The fact that it's the beginning of the night doesn't matter. The fact that it's the first half of the night doesn't matter. Why? Because you're judging only on the merits of can I beat these logistics and is this girl down? If you have a green light on those two things, it doesn't fucking matter where you are, what time it is, how many other girls are there, or if it's the first half of the night or the second half, okay? Now, I even think it's a little easier to pull in the first half of the night than the second half. Now, keep in mind, as I just said, RST Alex says you can't do that. Julian Blanc, RST Julian, said you can't do that. Valentino Cohen, who became a business coach, like a lot of them did, says you can't do that. I've done it hundreds of times, and, and so have my clients. It's a little bit easier of a sell to, to convince a girl to go and come back than to convince her to leave permanently. Okay? So in the first half of the night, I'm not going to give away the full strategy here, but... The idea is that you're going to go have some drinks real quick at your place and come right back. Okay, that's the way you pitch it. Drinks here are expensive. We could go, I live close by. We could go have a drink, come right back. That's going to prompt her objections. Okay, she's typically going to say, I can't leave my friends. She might also say, how do I know it's safe to go with you? If I go, that doesn't mean we're going to hook up. We just got here. I can't go unless she comes or unless my whole group comes. Okay, these are the types of things that you hear. I've mapped out all the major ones. There's 14 of them. And I define in my products the optimal responses to each one of those 14. And it's like training a guy in sales. It's like in the Wolf of Wall Street. When they say this, what do you do? When they say this, what do you do? It's very simple. If this happens, you do this. If this happens, you do this. Okay, and you can get access to that stuff at platinumdatingsystem.com or by booking a call in the description or in the pinned chat. Okay, keep leaving your questions here. Um, <clears throat> you 
you should display your lay count in the corner of your screen at all times. It changes every second. Hilarious. Um, okay. I say the lay count a lot because there's often, we can see in our analytics, there's often new people to the channel. And that's one of the only things that I have to go on to prove myself. Okay. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of receipt pictures with hot girls and hookup situations, over a thousand hours of infield, lots of full length pulls from start to finish, over a thousand testimonials. Those are very relevant stats in an unregulated industry. Okay. Only in the self help and dating industry can you have all the most popular figures being clowns that suck at the game. Okay. Only in this industry. Imagine the UFC where the most popular guys were guys that always lost in fights with terrible records. It doesn't make any sense, right? The guys with the best records are the most popular. In the NBA, okay, who's popular? LeBron James and Michael Jordan or some fucking no-name that can't make a shot? In other skill games, it's very clear that skill level correlates to popularity. Not in this game. Okay, fuck no, not in this game. When I was at a thousand lay count, which no one in the space is doing, I was there at 20, in 2018. When I hit a thousand lay count, I had 2,000 subs. 2,000. That's two subs per fucking girl that I banged. Okay. You don't need to be good at the game at all to get popular. And, and that I, I show that in video after video, after video after video that the guys that have the biggest mouths that get the most exposure have no fucking clue what they're doing. Okay, we looked at Myron's speed date the other day. Trash fire. Okay, they have 1.5 million subs. It's not because they're teaching good game. <clears throat> it's because they put on a spectacle, kicking out pieces of shit off their show. So, you know, that is what it is. But that's why I mentioned the fucking lay count. Okay, and that's why it's not to show off and to brag. It's to show you I've done all this shit countless times. I'm coming up on 20,000 contacts in my phone. I've seen and done it all in this game. And that's why I fucking showed that shit. Okay. There's the amount of contacts. Almost 20,000. <clears> all right. So... Uh, to recap what we've said so far, you're looking for the biggest venues. You want to get there relatively soon after the, the place opens. So we'll use the United States as an example. Most places close at 2, at 2 a.m. And they open by 10. Some clubs open by 11. But for the ones open by 10, you should be getting there by like 10.30 at the latest. Okay, you should shoot for like 10.30 to 2.30. At 10.30, girls will start filtering in. You can already start hitting shit up, okay? Not in a warm-up sense with the intent of actually trying to fuck those girls, okay? Because remember, everything's in a vacuum. You're looking at the merits of her logistical situation. Can I handle these logistics? Can I beat these objections? And how down is this girl? What's her general DTF level, which is going to translate into her general level of compliance? That's all you care about. <clears throat> okay. And you should be running quick interactions, five to 10 minutes maximum. You don't want to be doing long interactions unless it's a girl that you think you're going to pull. And by pull, I mean take her home. So if you run into a girl that's receptive, that has a good logistical situation, and when I'm talking about good logistics versus bad logistics, bad logistics would be hey, my sister's visiting from out of town. I can't leave. Okay, I can't go home with a stranger. My sister's here. That's a dead end. Hey, I'm the drunk driver for my friends. Okay, I have to drive everybody home at the end of the night. Uh, hey, I'm with my roommate, and we promised you know, we'd stick together. Right? These are all examples of bad logistics. Another <clears throat> obviously bad one would be, hey, I'm, I'm flying home in the morning. Okay, I don't live here. I'm flying home. Can you come tonight? No. I, I promised my friends, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Bad logistics. Move on. 
so the second you realize logistics are unbeatable, if you can still beat, you know, if you can still close it later on a date, take the number. If you can't, move on. Okay, so here's an example. Hey, what's up? I want to meet you real quick. Oh, sorry, I have a boyfriend. Cool, have a good night. Next girl. Okay, no, oh, well, is it a boyfriend, boyfriend? Or, uh, well, am I, am I better than him? Or can we hang out as friends? Or don't do any of that shit. It's low probability. And you're going to waste your time. Okay, there's something very important, a term from economics called opportunity cost. Opportunity cost is related to the time you spend doing this thing could be instead spent doing this other thing. So you don't want to sink your time into low probability situations or dead end situations. You want to be focusing your time on the girls that are receptive. Okay, mystery, the pickup artist mystery said that there's three types of girls and he used like an apple analogy. You have ones that are going to be very not receptive. You have ones that are going to be very receptive and then you have ones in between. So if you run into one that's not receptive, you want to move on instantly. You don't want to waste time. Hey, I wanted to meet you real quick. Oh, leave me alone. Can I just talk to you for a second? No, leave me alone. All right. Hey. Okay, that's an example. And, and guys are always so shocked when they hang out with me in person how quickly I'll move on. It, it's like, like let me use a poker analogy. Okay, for anybody that knows anything about poker, there's good hands that you can get dealt in Texas Hold'em, like ace-ace or king-king or ace-king. Okay. Then there's dog shit hands you can get, like two-seven. Okay, two, eight, three, seven, whatever. It just shit cards. You see that hand, you fold it instantly. It's an instant fold. Okay, you're not going to play trash hands. The same applies here. When you run into a girl that's not receptive or has a logistical dead end, you want to fold that hand immediately, meaning end the interaction. You don't want to dump time into it. Okay, oh, but let me use game to try to get past the boyfriend objection. I've banged a lot of girls with boyfriends. Okay, I don't officially encourage it. You can, you can end up fucking with the wrong person. Um, and I can tell you, most of the time, it's a dead end. Okay, so move on from those. If the girl is being not receptive or otherwise confrontational, move on instantly. Okay, don't feel bad about it. Don't let it throw you off. Let's say the girl gives you a hard insult. <clears throat> Okay, which is going to happen sometimes. Some girls are in a bad mood. Hey, what's up? I want to meet you real quick. Fuck off. Okay, is her response. Okay, right? Next girl. That's It's that simple. It's not, oh my God, a girl just told me to fuck off. I'm horrible. I suck. I'm going to bring all this negative energy into the next girl or I'm going to give up approaching tonight. No. Okay, we'll borrow another analogy. Door-to-door -door sales or cold calling. You can be the best salesman in the world, literally, and you're still gonna have people tell you to fuck off and slam the door in your face. The same is true here in the game. If you can't handle that sometimes, don't do cold approach, okay? But again, not doing cold approach is gonna really stunt your development and, and how you conduct yourself on dates, how you conduct yourself around girls in general, how you navigate social situations. It's indispensable to master cold approach even if you're getting decent results online i promise you it's extremely worth it okay i know it's scary at first or it can be scary and i know it's not as comfortable as sitting in the comfort of your home and, and swiping tinder but you have to remember that's how all real men had to do it prior to 10 years ago okay prior to 10 years ago all men throughout history have had to take action in person they had to get over that fear and make a move in person like a man, okay? Just because now you can rely on online doesn't mean you shouldn't cultivate that skill because online kind of shields you from a lot of shit, right? You're not going to get as many negative reactions. <clears throat> You're not going to get as many objections. You're not going to be encountering as many curveballs and, and dealing with as many, you know, it, once you get good at cold approach, the whole rest of the game becomes very easy, okay? If you can pull a girl cold from a club, a stranger, how easy do you think it's going to pull a girl from a date that already likes you, okay, that already has agreed to meet you one-on-one -on -one without her friends, presumably near your house? 
presumably with with you know time free after the date to come home with you she's probably open to hooking up on some level okay so you have to master this all right i can't stress that enough all the best guys i know in the game are not online heroes there's not one guy that i would consider elite that only is good at online okay these, these little these, these you know these guys that you see more and more of them in the modern day that are just like tinder heroes i've been out with these guys it's pathetic okay we see a pretty girl when we're walking around during the day they have no idea what to do and if they if they do go try to pick that girl up it's a joke and they embarrass themselves okay oh if only i could see her on tinder that's a, that's pathetic okay and in your quality as well there's nothing right oh hey i'm not matching any nines on tinder i'm not matching any eights on tinder guess what there's nothing stopping you from walking up to a nine on the street there's nothing stopping you from walking up to a nine at the club when i walk into a nightclub i do one lap through the whole place with a rule that i'm not going to approach yet i tell my wings no approach no approach let's do a lap i go through i get a lay of the land i see how many available girls there are by themselves and i start hitting the hottest ones first okay because remember there's no fucking warming up there's no first half the night doesn't count as as a bunch of idiots in the space say i'm gonna do a video soon <clears throat> by the way actually this is worth a a brief pause to 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 read this to you guys um i'm gonna do a video about misinformation in the space okay i have a group chat with me and josh and connor who are the the guys that run the eight-week program calls with me and you know we shoot the shit all the time and we were just throwing out whatever came to mind about misinformation in the space and i want to read through some of this for you guys because a lot of you believe a bunch of this stuff okay and i'm going to do a whole video on this and there's so much misinformation in the space i'm gonna i'm thinking about doing it as a series okay like busting myths in the dating game M busting myths in the dating space part one okay let's look at these ridiculous claims from these people part two let's look at these ridiculous claims from these people but just running through from our chat here okay um i showed them how i made a video reacting to fit x fearless where he says don't set dates because that makes you look needy if you ask a girl for a date that makes you look like you're begging for a meetup okay <laughs> so he's literally saying don't set dates because that means you're needy and desperate i said let's chop out the main way to close like currently at 1717 lake count here okay i went on a, a little bit of a run in the past week because liz was out of town with her mom they, they did a little uh, bonding trip together and I went you know balls to the wall close three in one day <laughs> uh, believe it was Saturday or, or one of those days um, and and racked up you know a bunch of new hot girls added some some good ones to the roster but coming from a guy that's closed a lot of chicks that's the main way that you're going to get a lot of your results is setting dates what a surprise right you meet girls on the online apps and through cold approach you set them for dates which sets up opportunities to get the hookup okay dates are like the key tool to do that fedex fearless is saying don't ask girls for dates okay so he's chopping out the main way to close the creator hamza says to delete tinder and stop going to clubs which are going to be your two primary lead sources so he's chopping out your primary two lead sources Corey Wayne, the bald retard, says, don't set the next date on the current date because that looks needy and that you should wait days after a date to set the next date so that you don't look needy, okay? Which, of course, might sound good in theory, okay? I, I can admit that. In theory, that sounds, oh, yeah, uh, I'm not going to ask the girl for a date, just like FedEx Fearless is saying. Oh, don't ask her on a date because then you look needy, right? You could take that logic all the way to don't even talk to the girl because then it shows you're interested. Okay, it's fucking total retard land here. But we have to address it because they're popular. 
Okay, so uh, let's see. Yeah, Corey Wayne is absolutely wrong there. Okay, about not saying that I, the lead is going colder over time. Okay, when you set the, the next date during the current date, what you're doing is avoiding a situation where she can stall you out over text. Okay, imagine I hook up with a girl tonight and then I say, hey, what kind of food do you like? Oh, I like sushi and blah, blah, blah. Cool, let's go out for sushi in two days. Okay, today's Thursday. Let's go out for sushi Saturday. Okay, cool. Yeah, what time? This time. Okay, done. Set. Done. Do you see the? Do you see how powerful it is? Okay, it's a very simple concept, and the reason that you do that <clears throat> is because the vibe is up at the end of the current date, and she can't ignore you in person. Now let's contrast the other way. Okay, he says wait days. So now I bang the girl on a Thursday. We would let Friday, Saturday, Sunday go by. I'm trying to be not needy. She's forgetting about me. Let's say I message her on Sunday or Monday. Hey, what's up? She can stall me there. This is the danger when you're engaging in text messaging. It's like a battlefield. She can stall me there. Now, suddenly, I don't even know if I'm going to ever see this girl again. Okay? Maybe she responds. Then we're going back and forth. She stalls me there. Okay, now I'm digging out of a hole. Now I'm in damage control mode. Why? Because I decided to do all this shit over text when the vibes died down, when she's literally, from a neurological standpoint, forgetting about me and losing investment. Okay, the semantic strength of connections neurologically is based on frequency and recency. Frequency is how often. Recency is how, how recent in the in the dis, in, in the in the past. Okay, you want to build up a requisite amount of investment in the form of temporal investment, spending time together, emotional investment with her getting feelings for you and starting to like you, and physical investment, which involves hooking up. You wanna build those things up to a requisite threshold so that she's on rotation as a, as a bona fide regular. Okay, not let that fucking momentum and, and investment you got on the first date wither out and die as time passes. Time is an investment killer. And you don't have enough investment from one day alone to have her be cemented as a regular yet. <clears throat> this is coming from a guy <clears throat> that's ran big rotations for over a decade. Okay, I understand them very well. I know very well how to get a girl on rotation Okay, with the highest chances. And it's doing it the way I fucking said. Setting the next day in person. She can't ignore you like she can over text. And over text, let's say she responds to your opener and then to your banter. Now you could run into objections over text and she could stall you there. You could run into logistical difficulties and she could stall you there. You could ask for the meetup and there's another compliance boost needed. She could stall you there. Why would you, from a, from a game theory standpoint, from a tactical standpoint, why would you put yourself in that situation? Okay. Because some bald <clears throat> fucking shit in my throat here because some bald retard with no receipts told you to wrote a book with three percent called the three percent man which is literally like doing that quite literally it's making you three percent of a man listening to that idiot okay i know for a fact that guy's not fucking hot girls and it's not because he doesn't show any pictures with girls ever it's because he carries himself like a total fucking dork hi i'm coach Corey wayne and you can get one of my Self-help books for blah, 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 blah. Okay, that's our industry, okay? And I have to listen to fucking retards in my comments, okay, coming at a guy that's actually done all this shit. It's not pretending behind a webcam and slinging retarded opinions, okay? My shit's all data-backed and tested. And I have to listen. Oh, well, Corey Wayne said, fuck Corey Wayne. Fuck, that, that guy doesn't know shit, okay? But he wrote a book about it. Who gives a fuck? Okay, next. Michael Sartain says, you can't get girls at clubs unless you know the DJ and you're in the DJ booth. <laughs> he also says cold approach is 2% of the game. Okay, coming from a guy that's pulled countless times from nightclubs without knowing the DJ and being in the DJ booth and training thousands of other men to do the same. 
You don't need any social status at all. His little fucking gay partner, Rolo Tomasi, says you can't cold approach unless you have pre-selection and social proof. <laughs> I did a whole video already dismantling that. Okay, But for obvious reasons, you don't need to know the DJ and be in the DJ booth to take your girl home from a nightclub. That's completely nonsensical. And for obvious reasons, being able to walk into any room any time and being able to take home the hottest girl with good chances if she's available is not 2% of the game. Okay, but that retard is out here slinging services. Okay, because he's a money hungry marketer. And he tries to turn people away from my shit, which will actually help them by using defamation. Okay, which he's going to receive a, a legal letter about very shortly, as already happened with his gay business partner, Rolo Tomasi. And that shut him the fuck up. Okay, now the angry beaver Sartain needs a, a slap on the wrist as well. And maybe he won't adhere to it. Maybe he'll keep running his mouth and then he'll have a lawsuit. Okay, next. Uh, John Zerka says you should talk to the fat girl for one hour before switching to the pretty one. Okay, here's the correct advice. Never, ever talk to fat girls, ever. Not to warm up, not to trick the, the, the pretty one, okay? Not to kill time. Only talk to girls that you want to fuck. Remember opportunity cost? That time you're spending talking to a fat girl for an hour could be talking to an attractive girl that you can take home. Okay, again, common sense. But hey, Zerka says this. Okay, now you understand why that's dumb. Zerka says, don't try to close the first date or she'll block you. Again, it's like, it, it's like, hey, uh, <laughs> you know, let's let's go in the UFC. Like, that's why the industry is so fucking maddening, right? It's like if it's like if you had Conor McGregor sitting on a stream and you had all these people that sucked at fighting that were giving terrible fighting tips and terrible fighting techniques, and they were all wildly more popular than the best fighter. And the best fighter had to sit there and, and dismantle from a technical perspective why these guys that suck at fighting, that have no evidence of them crushing the fighting game, give horrible fighting tips. And then like a real expert has to go in and be like, okay, guys, uh, this is dumb. Okay. 75 to 80% of the uh, first dates will close when you're doing things properly. Okay. And they will not block you. They're... <laughs> Uh, let's go to the next one. Jay Waller says you should dance with the fat girls at the club so the pretty girls will notice. He also says that during day game, you should try to speak to the fat girls in line at the cashier so that the pretty ones will notice. When I'm in the grocery store buying my milk, I see the fat girl and I want... That, that guy is a puppet for the Tates and just reads off copywriter messages quite literally does not have the first clue about banging hot girls. Oh, but he lifts weights and wears a nice blue suit. Not relevant. Not relevant. Okay, uh, what's next here in the chat? Owen Cook says talk to fat girls all night to build state. Don't do that. I, again, like I never thought when I embarked on this, this career path that I'd have to be sitting behind a mic, wasting time telling you guys not to go talk to fat girls. Look, look at, look, just look at the last three examples. Owen Cook, build state all night by talking to fat girls. Zerka, burn up an hour talking to fat girls so the pretty girls will notice. Jay Waller, go dance with all the fat girls. Let them do that. Okay. You don't do that. Trust me on that one. Okay. And, it, and it should be obvious, right? But, but they, they play these little mental tricks on you guys. Okay, uh, uh, so I'm going to pretend that, like I like the fat girl, so the pretty girl will take... No, 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 no. Do you know how often I'm talking to the fat girls in public or at the club? Never. Never. So Again, like... <clears throat> This is like fundamentals 101, but you have these like wildly popular creators pushing this stuff in mass. And what I realized when, when I like jumped on a couple uh, prospective client calls recently, right? My sales team was like, hey, um, you know, this guy uh, is debating between learning cold approach between our company and Michael Sartain's company. And I'm like, hey, listen, brother, 
That guy says cold approach is 2% of the game. That guy says only creeps cold approach. That guy says you can't get a girl from a club unless you know the DJ and you're in the DJ booth. That's all retarded shit. You want to go learn cold approach from him? Knock yourself out. Here's what I can do in cold approach. I can get guys pulling consistently all the time, right? And he ended up going with Sartain. Why? Because Sartain fought a dirty fight using defamatory narratives. He attacked my character by using defamatory narratives, okay, to make me unlikable. Again, using defamatory, aka lies, aka lying, to win the guy over, okay. And I, and I say to my team, look at this shit we have to deal with, right? I said to the kid on the call, I, I, I went through and, and showed how Sartain was lying objectively on like six different items, right? I go, try to catch me lying about any of my claims in the game ever. You're never going to do it because I never will do it. Not even once. Okay, I'm never going to go so, oh, yeah, I closed this girl when I didn't. There's been plenty of times where I've pulled stunners and just got a blow job or just got a hand job and no one would have known the difference and it didn't count in the late count at all. Okay. Pulling a nine and getting a blow job. I don't count that in the late count. It has to be a full intercourse sex close. Hey, how was that girl last night? Didn't close. Oh, but did you see how hot she was? Yeah. She was naked in my bed. Didn't close. Oh, I would have closed. I don't think so, man. She had a hard rule about it. Oh, are you going to see her again? Uh, no, she's flying home this morning. <clears throat> Not even reflected in the fucking stats. Okay. But that's because I, I am not a corny motherfucker and I'm not going to go make shit up. Owen Cook, on the other hand, <clears throat> is going to say to a girl on the street, Hey, I know this venue down the road. Oh, I know that place. And then they're going to cut the footage and make it look like he's pulling home. When in reality, they're walking to another venue and he's never going to fuck that girl in a million years. That's the difference between a real expert and a corny motherfucker. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Let's get back to real teaching here in a moment. Let's see if there's anything else in the list. And again, I'll make a full video on these things and go into more detail and waste more time on it. <sighs> Rolo says you can't call the approach without social proof and pre-selection. Yeah. Retarded and fully false. I, I said to my friends, look at all this misinformation. It's pure torture to me to watch these guys parade around with infinitely more views and po popularity while just completely saying nonsensical things. This can't happen in any other craft. I said you wouldn't have all these UFC fighters with horrible records being popular or shitty basketball players you know, being, being the, the ones that everybody follows. But in this industry, there's no quality control. There's no accountability. You could literally have a virgin that befriends Aiden Ross and Sneeko and Myron, and he's off to the races doing all the podcast circuits. He could tell you anything he desires about how the game works, and people will believe it because he's getting eyeballs on his shit, especially if he speaks with conviction. Think about how scary that is. Okay? And I said to my friends, and I'll, and I'll move on to the, the technical game advice again here in a second, the correctness of advice or skill of the coach is irrelevant to his popularity in this space. Think about that statement. <clears throat> I'm going to repeat it one more time. The correctness of advice or skill of the coach is irrelevant to his popularity in this space. Think about that. All right. <clears throat> now, for those that came in late, first off, hit the like button. Uh, secondly, what we've covered so far from a high level is you want to pick the venues with the most people. You want to get out close to the beginning of the night. In the U.S., that would be around 1030 at the latest and be out till about 230. Okay, the venues are going to typically close at 2. You want to work the street for a little bit of time afterwards, okay? It's a little bit easier to pull after the club closes. Why? Because you don't have to extract her from the venue. Why? Because a lot of times she's separated from her friends. Why? 
because she's also looking for something to do. This is how you would <clears throat> approach a girl on the street that just left the club. Hey, what's up? I want to meet you real quick. What are you up to right now? Oh, I'm just uh, calling an Uber to go home. Oh, I actually live close by. We should go have a few drinks there. Oh, well, I don't even know you. Well, we can talk along the way. Like We can get to know each other. <clears throat> It'll be cool. Come on, let's go. Uh, well, how do I know it's safe? Oh, you can tell I'm normal, like it'll be fine, and I have cameras in my building. Oh, well, if I go with you, that doesn't mean I'm gonna hook up. Yeah, don't worry, I don't have any any sexual expectations. Right. So it's just you're just putting her to a test, and then she's gonna give you objections so that she can feel safe and comfortable, and that's it. And then you're off to the races. Okay. <clears throat> now, you want to be doing five to ten minute interactions. And you're doing what I refer to as a real-time probabilistic assessment of two major things. Number one, her logistical situation and how you know strong are her objections. And what's the, what's the back of the napkin calculation on how well you can beat these logistics and beat these objections? Factor two, how DTF is this girl? You measure that by looking at her general compliance levels. And you're doing compliance tests at every step of the way. The opener is a compliance test. Okay, isolating her is a compliance test. Having her even pay attention and look at you and engage in the interaction is a compliance test. Going for the kiss is a compliance test. Going for the phone number is a compliance test. So you're measuring how compliant is this girl, how receptive is this girl, how on do things seem to be, and how well do I think I can beat this logistical situation? The moment, the second that the logistics or the DTF level seems not that good or unbeatable, you leave the interaction. Okay, You're making your moves based on something called expected value, otherwise known as EV. This is what governs the moves that you make in chess and poker as well. You're making moves based on the expected value, aka the expected probability of this move versus this move. Okay. If I stay in this interaction, I'm expecting to take her home with reasonable chance because I think I can beat her logistics and I think she's down enough because her general compliance level seems solid. Okay. Oh, a friend comes in, introduces new difficulties, introduces new logistical roadblocks. The equation changes. Maybe you grab a number and leave. Okay. So your goal is to get a number from every girl that you talk to, unless she's not down or it doesn't seem like it's going to go anywhere. Hey, I want to meet real quick. What's your name? Sorry, I have a boyfriend. Cool. Have a good night. I'm not going to get a number from that one. It's not going to go anywhere. Hey, I want to meet real quick. Fuck off. <clears throat> okay, have a good night. Not going to try for a number from that one. But it's a girl. Who cares? Okay, in a nightclub, there's lots of girls. You don't, you don't want to talk to the ones that are not interested. You don't want to talk to the ones that are barely interested. You're looking for the ones that are receptive. Hey, I want to meet you real quick. Hey, lights up, smiles. You're good on this one. Okay, and you just keep doing that. You want to try to always be in set, always be in an interaction. That's one of the rules. Okay, let me go over some of the rules. Rule number one, you're going to follow the old school three second rule, which means you wait no longer than three seconds after you see an attractive female to go and approach her. Okay, turn my head. I see an attractive female. One, one thousand, two, one thousand. I'm moving. What's the alternative? Well, what if she has a boyfriend? What if other people notice? Uh, what if she doesn't like me? What if she insults me? What if I'm not good enough? What if I'm not her type? What if she's too busy? What if I... If you follow the three-second rule, you won't be paralyzed and overcome by a litany of negative outcomes cycling through your head, okay? which are going to ultimately make you fuck up or, or give you a... a a predisposition to fuck up because either you're not going to go in and you've missed your chance or you're going to go in with a very negative attitude expecting some kind of failure or anticipating some kind of negative reaction 
and that becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy in lots of cases. Okay, and she could see you trying to build up the courage, and she's going to think that guy's a fucking pussy. Okay, or some other guy's going to come and talk to her. So these are all bad outcomes. Okay, that's why you go in within three seconds. Rule number two: <clears throat> try to get a phone number from every girl you talk to, except the ones that are taken or not interested. If you follow that, and you're also following the next rule, which is always be in interactions, you should be landing between about 10 and 20 phone numbers in a night. Oh, but John, I don't even get one phone number in a night. Okay. Are you always in interactions? Probably not. Are you always going from, for the phone number? Probably not. Are you following the three second rule? Probably not. Okay. So all that time you spend there with a beer in your hand against the wall, scanning the venue, talking to your friends. Oh, look at that girl, how hot she is. Look at that girl. She's pretty hot. Look at that guy. He looks stupid. This is all opportunity cost. That time could be spent in interactions with pretty girls. And this is also why you don't talk to fat girls. Okay. Cause you don't want to bang fat girls. And you don't need to warm up. That's an erroneous concept. You don't need to trick the pretty one because she's going to be wondering what's going on when you're talking to the fat girl. That's bullshit advice given by fake dating coaches such as Zerka and Jay Waller. Okay, those guys don't know jack shit. I don't care that they lift weights. I don't care that they fucking talk authoritatively. They're not experts. They're a fucking embarrassment to the game. Okay? So from now on, you follow the three-second rule without fucking buckling like a pussy because what's going to happen okay yeah yeah the three second rule the three second rule you get to the club you see the pretty girl you freeze you become paralyzed and you make an excuse uh she's too busy uh i'm probably not her type uh she probably has a boyfriend uh she's not pretty enough for me i'll do the next one oh i just need to have a beer or two uh no no more okay use a powerful language pattern in your head up until now i pushed out up until now i made excuses up until now i wasted time no more from now on you go out you see a girl and your criteria by the way <clears throat> for whether or not you approach her is would you fuck that girl it's a binary decision yes or no that's the only consideration for approaching. Would I fuck that girl? If it's a no, don't talk to her. If it's a yes, follow the three-second rule. Okay? So this is how you should run a night. You get there by 1030 at the latest. This is what I like to do in the beginning. I suggest you do the same. You say to your wingman, if you are with wingmen, let's do a lap. No approaching on our first lap. You guys go through the venue, you go through all the rooms and the floors, if there's multiple spots, and you're just getting a lay of the land, okay? Who's here? How many available girls are there? And who do I want to talk to first, okay? I like to talk to the hottest ones first. Why? Because they can leave, because other guys can talk to them. And because why the fuck not? Don't tell me it's because you haven't warmed up yet because you shouldn't be doing warm-ups. That's an erroneous concept. RSD push that, other dumb retard coaches push that. It's complete bullshit, okay? You're not, you're no longer are you gonna put on a little pickup hat and little pickup alias and go out to do your little pickup tricks, okay? You are a guy that fucks. You are a guy that is ready to pick up a girl at any moment. Okay, I don't give a shit if you're going to get a loaf of bread at the store or if you're fucking walking down the street to go get a fucking sandwich. Okay, or you're at the nightclub hanging out with your friends or you're at the airport waiting to catch a flight. From now on, when you see a pretty girl, she is in danger of getting fucked by you. That's your new mentality. Okay, it's not, oh, she's, she'll never like me. Uh, I haven't warmed up yet. I haven't done push pull and all these other fucking dumb little tra tricks and tactics. Okay. You see her, you go in. So I talk to the hottest ones first because 
when you know what you're doing, when you learn proper game, you can pull those girls. Okay, Every set should be looked at in a vacuum, irrespective of the time of the night, irrespective of how many girls you've talked to so far, and irrespective of how many of what happened before. As I said earlier in the video, I don't care if you've gotten 30 rejections in a row, you need to bring your A game on girl 31. And I've had situations like that, not, not 30 rejections in a row, but I've had strings of rejections, even at an advanced level, because sometimes you talk to girls that are in bad moods, that have boyfriends they don't want to cheat on, that just don't want to talk to anyone, that are actually trying to catch up with friends, you, you name it, okay? So let's say I get like three or four rejections in a row. I could sit there and think, hey, I really suck. No girl likes me. I'm a fucking loser. The next girl will probably reject me too. Or I could tell myself a different story. I'm still the man. I derive my own value internally. I don't depend on the validation of others to give myself worth. I have a metaphorical brick wall and I set my value at 100 and it doesn't move. And girls can fucking reject, <laughs> reject me all day and it doesn't impact my value. They can call me whatever name they want. They can do whatever they want. It doesn't change my value. Okay. Now, with that mentality, I can weather and withstand rejection and not let it affect me. I'm not saying become inhuman and become impervious to feeling emotions. I'm just saying don't let some girl at a club or any person ever anywhere define your value. You define your value. There's a clip with Conor McGregor, and, he, and he's become more controversial and, and gotten himself into all kinds of fucked situations. I'll go into the, the chat here in a moment. Um, but there was a, a good clip of him where he said, once you've mastered the internal, it's so much more powerful and stronger than, than the external. So when you're deriving your mindset and your worth internally, it's like unshakable from external events. Okay. And he, and he referenced that like in preparing for his fight against Jose Aldo, right? Where he was predicted to, to lose and he knocked him out <clears throat> and he, and he was saying like, he was so strong with his convictions internally that that, that mind, mindset is extremely, excuse me, mindset is extremely powerful, okay? So you do the lap, and okay, maybe you're not ready to be approaching nines and nine fives and stuff like that. That's fine. But now you're going to start hitting shit up. Okay, you've done the lap. You see what's available. Now you look at a girl. She's above the threshold. You would bang her. You go straight in. You follow the three-second rule. Whether that interaction is successful or not, you immediately go to the next one. And you continue that, that until the bar club closes. That's how you get 10 to 20 phone numbers in a night. And remember, you're trying for a phone number from every single girl, unless she's taken or unless she's not interested. Okay? And the mindset is, you're good enough for any girl, at that club and you should assume that she's going to like you and be attracted to you before you approach okay that's a key point the purpose of a cold approach the purpose of walking up to a stranger in public is not to win her over it's not to make her like you it's not to be the, the guy that you think that she'll be the most attracted to okay guys think oh okay here's a pretty girl she probably likes funny guys and witty guys. I'm going to be like that. And then she'll like me. She probably likes clever guys. I'm going to do clever stuff. And then she'll like me. As soon as you try to be a certain type of guy that's not you, you've lost. As soon as you try to be a type of guy that's not your authentic self, you've lost. Because they're bullshit detectors and their ability to detect incongruence is very, very high. Okay, they see right through that shit instantly.
And that's what every other guy's doing. And that's why every other guy is failing. What does it signal when you try to play a little game or do a little trick? Okay, let's take Todd V, for example. Todd V tells you to pretend that you don't like the girl so that she'll be wondering, does this guy like me? And then the theory goes that she'll come and chase you. In reality, in practice, when you put on this little act that you don't like the girl and you're like, hey, uh, I think maybe we'll just end up being friends. Uh, I don't know if you're my type because I normally am accustomed to dating Ivy educate. As soon as you do that, the girl thinks, number one, what a fucking loser. Okay, doing this little act. Number two, he must be low value. Why? Because if he was high value, if he was on my level, he wouldn't need to do that shit. So this is his attempt. Do you see what's happening here? This is why fancy gaming gimmicky stuff doesn't work. This is why most of the industry is fucked 10 ways sideways. He needs these tricks to try to win me over. This is his attempt to win me over because he's not good enough on his own. Because he's a fucking loser on his own. That's what you're communicating. So you're actively driving girls away. That's why when I react to Todd V's content, I say that he's basically spraying pussy repellent on you. Hey, I think that we might just be friends. Pussy repellent. Hey, uh, you look like a Sarah from Tennessee. Pussy repellent. Okay? Don't do that shit. Don't try to play little games and do fancy little tricks and say dumb shit. It's not you. She knows it instantly, and it signals that you're a fucking loser who needs little tricks to try to win her over. Okay? Instead, you're going to assume that she likes you and that it's a done deal before you talk to her. What does that do? Something extremely powerful. Now when you're speaking to her, all your fucking body language, all your verbals is communicating, I think I already got you. I know I already got you. But again, it's not coming off in an arrogant way. It's coming off in a way that exudes full confidence and assuredness. What are you communicating then? That you're a high value guy, that you're a confident guy, that you're good enough just the way you fucking are interacting authentically in that moment. You see the difference? And all you need to do is just move it forward. He's not going to say, hey there, guy, communicating authentically. Can we go home together? No, you have to lead it that way. Hey, can I give you my phone number? Can we go out sometime? That might happen once in a blue moon, but it's on you to make that happen. Even when I get students regularly approaching, they often forget, oh, I need to ask her for the phone number. Yes, you need to make moves. You need to be the one asking for the phone number. You need to be the one trying to make out with her. You need to be the one trying to take her home. That's on you, and you need proper strategy and tactics to do that. And I'm not going to go through and give the, the full blueprint on how to do all those things. But it's all mapped out in my products. Okay, You can get the digital products that are do-it-yourself. Or you could get on the AWE program and have me coach you personally. All right, I'll get back to some more. Uh, technical explanation of this stuff in a moment. Let me look at some of the, the questions in the chat here. Okay. Um, can you game outside the club or in the line? Yes. And I, I very often do that. When you get in line for a club, okay, you should be befriending the bouncer and the, and the uh, promoters and all this stuff so you can cut the line and get discounts and stuff like that. Right? You should just be able to get walked into clubs if you're introducing yourself to people and befriending them. However, if you do need to wait in line, you want to wait in line with a pretty girl. Okay, so that means, and this is gonna sound strange, but you wanna either cut the line so that you're right behind 
pretty girls or you need to wait a moment until some pretty girls get in line and then go in line right behind them why opportunity cost that time you're spending in the line is time you can be gaming a hot girl instead of just standing there with your dick in your hand so very often i'm gaming a girl in line and i convince her to leave and go home with me before we even get in the club But hey, it's the first half. Don't listen to retards on the internet that, that don't show proof. Okay. I don't give a fuck what Jay Waller or Zerka or Corey Wayne or Rolo. None of these guys have pictures with girls. None of these guys have pictures with hot girls. And I've shown in countless videos that they don't know what the fuck they're talking about. Okay. Listen to a guy that's actually done all this stuff that's shown you proof of doing all this stuff. And we will, the scale will tip. Okay. Soon enough, mark my words. We're going to crack paid advertising. We're going to blanket the fucking globe with our message and our brand. And all these fucks that have, have ruled the space, you know, due to alliances with other popular scammers and such will be put to shame. Okay. Because you, there's no limit on scaling paid advertising. We'll be at the point where we're spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on ads every month and millions of people will see my shit. Okay, until then, understand that you shouldn't listen to people that have shown no proof of, of getting results in this space. Okay. So, yes, you can game again. What would prevent you from doing this? Like, I know I know there's so much like counter interference from these idiots telling you stuff. Like, oh, should I be should I be speaking to fat girls? Uh no. Okay. Uh, Let's get ourselves back at grounded in reality. No, you should not be gaming fat girls. Not to warm up, not to confuse the pretty girl. Okay, never. In no circumstances should you be gaming a fat girl. Okay, or, or wasting time in an interaction with a fat girl. Okay, the end. Um, Booking a photo shoot with Snapper would you suggest one or two hours? It's up to you to balance your your budget. Obviously, more pictures is better, but it depends on your finances. How do you get nines and tens in night game? Do you need to merge sets or do pawning? No, you don't. You walk up to them and you hit on them and you try to take them home. The cop walking will be more intense with the hottest ones because their whole group has been preconditioned to save her from the relentless approaches and protect her from all the weirdos. Okay. So it's a little bit more difficult to pull them cold uh, straight away from the venue, but you can still get their number and set dates. I mean, you can pull them too. It's just, it, you just have more obstacles to overcome. Um, Yeah, a lot of people say I look like the English footballer Harry Kane. Um, <laughs> there was a time like 10 years ago where I was joking with girls at raves that I was Wolfgang Gardner. People believe that. Um, let's see. <laughs> RSD Alex. Fuck that guy. He was part of the whole fucking dog shit company hurting everybody and then he showed his true colors and pussed out when they fired him and he cried on the plane and told the told youtube that he's posting pictures on instagram he's crying in the bathtub he's a fucking pussy and he tried to crash his car into a tree and stuff because he wanted to kill himself okay all that's fine the guy obviously has severe mental problems okay but don't go be an inner game coach don't go fucking try to help guys with their internal beliefs and mindsets when you're a fucking train wreck, a suicidal mess. It was about Alex Four Week Natural, who, for those late to the stream, emailed me saying he was going to try to copyright strike the video I did about him because he's quitting dating coaching and he's trying to clean up his online presence. And to which I replied, I'm not fucking removing jack shit. Go fuck yourself. Because uh, the clips I used in that video were completely protected under fair use because they were clips he once had public on youtube i don't care that he's now since deleted them that's still fair game in the fair use law so he can go fuck off 
And I told him in that email response that he hurt a lot of people and he should reflect upon that. Okay. To be a self proclaimed inner game coach, constantly professing there's no reason you're not enough when he was a broke alcoholic, drowning in debt, living out of a van, attempting to kill himself. Okay. Those are the facts. And I never sugarcoat the facts, as you know. He also was pushing technically incorrect game. Four times reapproach rule is retarded. Long interactions is retarded. Can't pull in the first half of the night is retarded, okay, amongst other things. Yeah, it, it, it is a skill game. It's no different than chess and poker. Um, everything on a case-by-case -case basis. Yes, but you develop something called heuristics, which is patterns of behavior and situations fall under certain umbrellas and you have rules of thumb for how to handle certain categories of situations and that therein defines world-class mastery versus not. Okay, I've richly developed all those mental heuristics so I can know intuitively and automatically without conscious serial processing and deliberation what the ideal move is. And as a good analogy, the famous chess player Bobby Fischer would go from game to game. He would see the board, boom, see the board, boom, see the board, boom. And all the other experts that were you know, much less skilled than him on the other end of the, each of the games, when he was going through and doing that, playing a lot of people at once, they would have to sit and like serially process this move versus this move and this move versus this move and, and try to weigh all this stuff consciously because their mental heuristics weren't developed to the level that Bobby Fisher's were. And that is how I see myself in this game. I see any, any problem, and it's been like this for years, I see any problem or, or situation, I, I intuitively know the optimal fix and from a coaching standpoint. From a personal game standpoint, any situation I'm in ever in the game, I intuitively know the optimal solution without any conscious deliberation. And, and that's precisely the effect that I wanted. Mystery said, when I was first starting off, Mystery said, you practice game to calibrate to better and better strategy and to make it automatic. And that's what I've done. I, I've optimized the shit out of it and I've made it fully automatic. So then you, you become like a lethal weapon. Any, any situation, any time, I know the best moves for myself and, and for the clients. And that's why I can run circles around these other retards in the space because they didn't put in the blood, sweat, and tears. They didn't develop the mental heuristics. They don't know the optimal moves. So they go online and they say nonsense. And I know exactly from a technical perspective why their dumb, nonsensical claims are exactly as such. And I explain that in countless videos. Um. Yeah, black pill is false. As a handsome dude, you get approached, but it's rare. You can't build your entire game around it. And it also still doesn't teach you how to run a date or text or, or run an interaction or do anything that you need to know how to do. Um, if a girl doesn't give a verbal objection, but instead just avoids your proposition, what do you do? Um, you prompt her and ask for an explicit yes or no. Um, yeah, OG John with a fucking disheveled appearance and a bottle of liquor. Um, I would have fucking drank myself to death had I not stopped. They found uh, fatty deposits on my liver when I was like 35. And they're like, if you keep drinking like this, you're going to have serious health problems in five years. I quit. And the liver uh, was fat-free after three and a half years of no drinks. I just hit four years in September. But after three and a half years, it finally came up clean on the scans. But, you know, not something to fuck around with. Um, Yeah. Thanks. All right. 
Hamza is a full-on retard that pumps tons of misinformation into the space. Okay, that's absolutely retarded. I had a client last night on my coaching call. Uh, hey, isn't status the most important thing in the game? Uh, no, it doesn't really matter at all. Uh, but doesn't Leonardo DiCaprio have a better advantage than us? Yes, he does. But that's a celebrity. None of us here are celebrities. I don't think any of us here are going to become celebrities. Therefore, it's not even relevant or worth considering from a practical standpoint. How else? Give me a, another example where status would matter. Oh, well, what if you uh, own the club? Do you own the club? Are you a club owner? Do you have a plan to become a club owner? Right? Like, it, that's just that's just a fucking bullshit thing. Okay, you don't you don't need status. You can dominate with with zero status with zero friends. It doesn't fucking matter. Okay, if you know the the correct things to do, how to move things forward. Chicks don't know your status. They don't know your bank account, nor do they give a shit. As long as you're not living in poverty. Okay, these myths that go around how you need money and status, it's complete bullshit. What's the maximum you should wait to sleep with a girl? Uh, there is no maximum. Yeah, I don't think you should be adhering to that at all. You should be closing either from a night game pull or on the first date. Some girls will make you wait multiple dates. There's nothing wrong with that. And then you, you wait until she's comfortable. Do you actually ask girls out? Yes. That's how you get laid. Like this whole, like, I'm going to do nothing and it'll just work out. Makes zero sense. Like the guys that are like, don't approach. You look needy. Don't ask girls on dates. You look needy. It's like, <laughs> that's like telling someone trying to make money, like, don't do anything because you look needy for wanting money. Are you going to make money just sitting there? Are you going to get girls just sitting there? Yeah, you have to actually ask them out. That's part of the, how this works. Every time I get anxiety, I can't think of what to say in the conversation. It's because you're making it too big of a deal. Treat speaking to girls like talking to guy friends or your dad, except you're adding in sexualization and flirtation. How do you know when to lock in on a girl if you're just doing five to ten interactions? If you move her into isolation and she's getting into a makeout with you, then I try to pull those. If a bunch of friends come in and try to drag the friend away, you go for a quick number close. Your stuff makes night games so easy. It's amazing when I go out with XRSD guys, see them waste hours playing the jester for girls that aren't down. RSD programmed them as such so that they would keep coming back to buy 70 products. That's why I hate RSD. Because their shit doesn't work. It's led by a fucking full-on ginger queer clown who admits to being a queer clown. And they're they're putting you on a hamster wheel to fucking waste your life, waste your time, and, and take all your money. It's nothing short of highway robbery. But they do so while being a wolf in sheep's clothing. That's the that's even worse. It's like fucking stabbing you in the back. They're pretending to be your friend and pretending to be on your side. They're not on your side. Face that fact. If you're still adhering to RSD principles or think that their shit's going to help you, you're still delusional and you're still fucking part of the cult. It's not going to help you. It never was designed to help you. And if you haven't figured that out by now, look at your results. Look at how often that shit is working to get you laid. Okay? And then part ways with it. Chalk it up to, you know, you didn't know any better. Now you do. Let the guys that still worship Owen Cook suck his dick and waste their life away. <laughs> A friend of mine is worried about being arrested. It's not illegal to talk to girls in the street. Okay, Just open casually, hey, I wanted to meet you really fast. Hey, I want to meet you real quick. I'm John. 
that's it okay once in a while you'll get a hard insult or rejection like fuck off that's part of the game who cares I don't know what world you guys are living in. Let's, let's let's read this one. It kind of ties into the last comment about a guy worrying about being arrested for cold approaching. It's extremely difficult to know when it's okay to cold approach when not in a club or bar, like at the store. What the fuck do you say to not get pepper sprayed? At all times, you have permission to cold approach. Okay, Trust me, you will not get thrown in jail for saying hello to a stranger. Okay, All you do is you walk up and say hello I wanted to meet you. Hey, can I meet you real quick? That's what I've been using as my go-to opener everywhere at all times for over a decade, and my students as well. And no one's getting pepper sprayed. No one's getting arrested. Not It never happened even once on either of those for any client. You might be told to go away. You might be ignored. You might be given a rude response if they're in a bad mood. That's it. There's nothing illegal about saying hello to a stranger in public. So don't be scared of it. When you try to pull a threesome at the club, do you approach, then have Liz join the conversation, or do you both approach potentially at the same time? Um, this is outlined, the full strategy is outlined in my threesome blueprint video that I have for free on YouTube. <clears throat> That I made with Liz, but the quick summary is you send the girl in first. Okay, so you go out with a bisexual rotation girl or girlfriend. The girl goes in first. The girl gives them some kind of direct compliment about them being pretty. Okay, so Liz would go in, hey, like I just wanted to say hi. I think you're really beautiful. Oh, you're beautiful too, right? They instantly bond. Both of them like light up, and there's all this like, oh my God, my God, oh, this looks so nice. You look so nice. Then I typically will have Liz like bring the girl to the dance floor and like dance with the girl. And when they're dancing close, a lot of times they start kissing. That's an optional step. Sometimes there's no dance floor. But once it seems like the girl likes her, which is pretty quick, I come in and I say, me and my girl think you're really sexy. Now, since I'm already with the pretty girl, I now have bypassed her value approval process why because another pretty girl has already pre-approved me i bypass her safety concerns and her like is this guy a creep concerns why because another pretty girl has already pre-approved me so the amount of objections goes down to almost nothing and at that point all you have to do is work logistics we live close by we should go play with our little dog <laughs> we live close by we want to show you our view we live close by we should go have a drink there minimal objection a or sometimes not even any objections okay she knows we're interested in her we told her she, we think she's sexy lots of times we get into a triple makeout at the club okay liz will start kissing her and then i come in oh let me see how she kisses Oh, that's really good. Let's the three of us kiss. That's it. It's easy. But you have to have a bisexual. I mean, you don't have to, but that's what that's what makes it way easier is already having one of the girls for the threesome out with you. And again, Corey Wayne, someone says his advice is outdated. He's not a real expert anyways. He never was. It was revealed that the shit in his dumb books and the dumb shit he says on YouTube was like ripped off some guy on some forums, which is exactly what Rolo did. Okay, Rolo Tomasi took a whole bunch of content from this guy, Tom Likas, and he just ripped a bunch of shit off these old forums called the So Suave Forums. And it's nonsense. And he repackages it and just tries to push it out in mass. And then a whole bunch of other people push it. And then since a lot of people are pushing it, everybody assumes it's true. No, it's not fucking true. It's bullshit. Okay, just like retard Corey Wayne. And look at these guys. Look how they carry themselves. You think they're fucking hot chicks? Not a chance in a million years. 
they carry themselves like two huge dorks, which is exactly what they are. I'm looking like some money. Cool. I've already stated our business does multiple seven figures a year. Julian used to pull fat girls to get the pull mechanics down. That's retarded. <clears throat> Passion is fuck today. Lit as fuck. Digging this style more. Um, yeah, I don't know. In a good mood today. I got to return to the gym this week after two weeks off from tattooing. Liz is back from her trip with her mom. I got a lot of new blood on rotation really hot ones with really good sex the business is doing well so life is good um it's a boss boss brand i only have like two main wa watches i use this one and this other boss one here I have a Rolex Submariner that I used to wear, but I don't really care. It's too common. I don't like doing the same shit as everybody else. Um, all right, what else here? And for those of you that want the full cold approach strategy, okay, go to this link up here or go to the fucking link in the chat, the pin chat comment, and do yourself a favor, at least find out what the pricing and options are. Okay, we have um, do-it-yourself programs that are very cheap and affordable. We also have payment plans for people that are able to spend a little bit more. You can coach with me personally on the mentorship. Um, we have live programs being run all over the world and every continent. We can come to your city. Just get on one of the calls, find out the details and the pricing. You don't have to fucking buy anything. It's just to know what what's available for coaching options and we'll fix the problem this week permanently that's what we do we're not here to dick you around make you buy a million things we're not here to string you along on a hamster wheel with a carrot in front of your fucking face okay, i want you getting laid this week and, and and that to be the new norm for the rest of your life that's what my training does How do you take care of guys' fashion before they take the professional photos for dating apps? We have an optional fashion package uh, that can be added on. We have a former GQ stylist named Kristen on the team that works with guys directly, helps them recombine existing elements in their wardrobe, and we and she gives them new clothing recommendations as well. Um. Yes. <laughs> I had a really high rotation girl that had been on board for like six months and she's like, you've never even taken me out one time. I don't think I can, <laughs> I can keep seeing you. And I was like, fine. And I just let it ride. And then um, I hit her back up and she's like, I missed you so much. Can I see you this weekend? I'm like, sure. Um, So that's cool. Sometimes you lose them. Okay. Let me fucking tell Liz to bring out protein drink. I'm hungry as fuck. Um, all right, let's keep going through the questions here. Um That's awesome. 75. Good job. OK, 
Okay. If a girl is receptive to your opener, is the probability of you banging her 10%? No. What I found to be 10% is what percentage of my numbers I close. And it's even actually slipped. It's a little worse now. Um, and I'll, I'll explain that in a second. But around the time I hit 1,000 late count in December 2018, I realized I had about 10,000 contacts in my phone. Okay, I showed the amount of contacts in my phone early, earlier in the stream today. It's 19,800. Right? So I should be, if, I'm, if I was adhering to the 10%, I should be at 1,980 girls. But instead, I'm at 1,717. So what happened between December 2018 and, and now where it slipped below 10%? Um, number one is I live with Liz, right? Me and Liz have been together almost four years. We've been living together for like three years. And so oftentimes, like last night, I had two new girls that wanted to fuck <clears throat> and three repeats that wanted to meet. And Liz got back from traveling with her mom and I, and I hung out with her. And so, like normally, like had, if I wasn't living with Liz, I would have closed those, or at least one. Um, I'm also doing a lot more volume. Sao Paulo is 12 million people. So I ramp the volume really high, and a bunch of leads slip through the cracks because I don't work them all to the bone as I used to. So there's like a little bit of like extra superfluous leads that don't get closed out. And then... I don't know. I, 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 I'm doing a lot of work these days, focusing on Jim. Um, Jim, scanning the company, and I, and I have a stacked, like stacked, stacked rotation full of really hot girls that I oftentimes prioritize. So on a given night, if I can bang a new girl or hang out with rotation or hang out with Liz, I'll usually pick to hang out with Liz or rotation. So the count should be way higher, could be way higher. Um, but it, you know, I'm not complaining and, and my goal isn't just to max out new lays. It never was. This is the byproduct of having a high level of skill in the game, but I've always ran big rotations and prioritized rotations. To me, the real benefit of doing all this is to find really hot, cool girls you click with that you have great sex with. It's not to, to post up a higher lay count that just happens as a result of, of being good at it. Um, but, you know, Paul Janka, uh, who's going to come on my channel in a few weeks. <clears throat> Let me confirm with him. I think we're tentatively planning for November 12th, which is a Sunday, um, for Paul to come on. He confirmed 10% as well. He only, he, he maxed out at a late count of 250. But that was mostly from day game in New York City, so that's very impressive. Um, but yeah, he verified the ten percent, and I, I've checked with other compared notes, other top guys. Um, that's about right. So, but it's ten percent of phone numbers. Okay, that you can expect to close. Then you've got. People that put out false statistics like Adam Lyons, who says that 100% of girls he talks to close. Again, difference between real stats and, and lies. You would think these guys would make their lies a little bit more believable, right? But people don't know the difference. So why not just go to the extreme? Oh, yeah, 100%. Great. Uh, you know, where do I sign up? Then he's on a podcast with Zerka. Zerka, what you need to do is is make the call 15 minutes so they'll come back for more yeah and zerka's like oh that's a good idea i didn't think of that and he's like yeah what i do is build businesses it's like really adam Lyons? i thought you were a dating coach these guys are are, are so sh like shameless that they'll literally go on and in that same conversation in that podcast i think it was on michael sartain retard show um thank you <laughs> uh can you bring one more coffee too next time you come up um do the machine the chocolate one yeah thanks let's go to the gym soon all right um zerka admitted that he hates 99 percent of men right so they're literally on on the podcast trading ideas how they can extract more money from guys while delivering no value 
and and they're like trading tips. It, to me, that's like as sickening as it gets. Okay, it's like two scammers on camera. It's not like the, it's not like this was recorded and posted by accident. They're openly live streaming about this. So shameless that Zerka is going to say, "Oh, I hate ninety nine percent of the guys. I think they're all losers." And Adam Lyons is like, "I, I build businesses." Here's how you can extract more money off these unsuspecting victims. Not to mention their advice is dog shit and their stats are fabricated. But again, you know, that's that just comes with the territory, I guess. That's the fucking nature of the industry. You wouldn't you would never see a terrible fighter in the UFC leading this leading the space. They would get no attention. You would never see a terrible basketball player leading the NBA. They'd get no attention. Everyone cares about LeBron James and Conor McGregor. I'm the equivalent of LeBron James and Conor McGregor in this space. Okay, I don't care if you disagree with that. All the facts support that. That's not just my opinion. So you would think, or you know, if if the same were true as it is in those industries, but again, this industry is unregulated. Nobody saw me fuck all the girls that I claim to have fucked, which is why I have several hundred pictures with them in hookup situations which is why I have over a thousand hours of infield proving that I can do this over and over and over taking girls home start to finish, which is why I have over a thousand testimonials. That's as close as you can get to proving yourself, but that only can go so far. Most people will never know that they'll land on fresh and fit because they get all the views because they have a, a Jerry Springer show. I mean, a, a drama kickout show. That's, that's what people want to see. So, um, Todd V game going meta with the fat chicks. Um, okay. I have a video about airport game. Um, essentially you, you game girls at the airport bar. And if they're on the same flight as you, you try to sit next to them by telling the person in the seat next to them that, they, that you're the girl's boyfriend. And if it doesn't work, which it usually does, then you have her try at the seat next to you and say that she's your girlfriend and ask to switch seats. Then you game the girl and you know they can fucking give you a hand job under the blanket and shit like that. But again, proceed at, at your own risk there because you're potentially uh, you know, doing illegal things. I've never banged a girl on a plane. I've had tons of chances, but I, I don't really want to risk that. I've, I've fucked a bunch of flight attendants that have told me stories that they've arrested people or you know, had guys arrested um, after being caught fucking on the plane. They get arrested when they land. So I just don't want to take that chance, right? It's technically not legal. So, um, but what you can do is get their phone number, and um, if they live in that city, you can set up date a date with them when they when you get back to that city. If they're going to your destination city, you can get their phone number and fuck them during the trip. Okay, so watch the video for the full explanation on that. Yes, I am the. Uh, the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> um, all right, let's keep going through the questions here. I just started a new technique when I'm in the club where I approach a hot girl, drop down at her feet, and do 100 push-ups. Okay, I hope you're joking. That doesn't sound like you are. I get up and shake her hand really hard. Okay. Cool. Um, I get attached to hot girls quickly. Should I just date more hot girls to get over it? Yes, you acclimate. They soon feel like a seven once you have enough options with them. I have a hard time understanding how there are people who have gotten HIV from banging one person, and yet you've managed to stay clean after 1,700 plus. Um, two factors there. Number one, the actual real stat, if you bang a girl unprotected vaginally that has HIV, it's one in 1,250. Okay, So statistically, if you banged 1,250 girls that all had HIV and you went raw on all of them, you should catch it statistically okay but the vast majority of people don't have hiv and it's hard to catch through raw vaginal okay it, it, the risk goes up like 10x 
through anal. Okay, so don't do raw anal. That's like rule number one. Now, the second point <clears throat> is a little magical thing that I started taking like six months ago after a fully clean STD screen, mind you, um, is something called PrEP. Okay, now PrEP prevents HIV. It's a preventative measure so that you can fuck people with HIV and not catch it. Okay, the odds are like extremely small. Like, and that's just something I'm doing to be responsible. Um, never caught HIV, thankfully, but don't want to get it and probably should have started this prep shit way sooner. But it, it's used like, it's mostly used like in the gay communities and stuff like that, I think, is because they're doing raw anal. And the reason why it's spread more easily through anal is because the fucking blood vessels and the tissues break easier in, in, in your asshole and it gets transmitted like that. Um, so, you know, for those that are not going to get on prep, um, you don't, again, I, I've, I've, I've always preached that STD risk is not a big deal. Um, some might call it irresponsible, but I'm just speaking to the statistics. Okay, so everything is curable except for HIV and herpes, and you can prevent HIV with this PrEP stuff, but even if you're not taking PrEP, uh, most people don't have HIV, and the odds of catching it if you bang someone that does have HIV is 1 in 1,250. So just, again, make your own judgments, but be informed about the real stats. Okay? Um, I've caught chlamydia like four or five times and that's the most common one and that's gone in one week with one pill. You take Azithromax, it's gone in a week and I didn't have symptoms any of the times. It was just caught through routine testing. So, you know, but you, then you have to tell like girls that you fucked like, hey, I have chlamydia and they have to take Azithromax and that can blow girls out of rotation, right? So, um, whatever and then, and then with um herpes most people have some strain of herpes already and and just don't show anything but if you were to contract like hsv1 or 2 right the, the mouth herpes or the genital herpes you can take uh, a medication to prevent outbreaks you have a friend that has genital herpes and he takes um what the fuck is it called um, Valtrex at a preventative dose and that prevents outbreaks and it's like only um, I, I think I, don't quote me on this but I'm pretty sure like it's it's really only transmissible when there's outbreaks but I don't know for sure um, but anyways again it's, it's just not as big of a deal as people think like I have clients that are like I'm never going to have vaginal sex because I can because people are worried about pregnancies too and you solve that one with a vasectomy and again it's reversible and whatever so I, I got a vasectomy in October 2014 and I have frozen sperm that I froze at the age of 30 in 2014 um, that I can have a kid with if I want or I can just reverse the vasectomy that's an option as well but the sperm's more vital and healthy when you're younger. So I can use that frozen sperm from 2014. And, I, and I've mostly cream pied, like at 2014, October 2014, I was around 350 count. And now I'm at 1,717. So I've had the vasectomy for, you know, like 1,400 girls almost. And I've cream pied a shit ton of them since with no worries about pregnancy and never caught HIV, and now I take the PrEP stuff so that, it, you know, I can't get HIV, essentially. It's like being bulletproof. So there's no worries of HIV or pregnancy. It's a simple, simple uh, solution there. But, you know, again, those are the, the statistics that we just covered there. Um, let's see. If someone that has a YouTube channel teaches game and has no infield, they have no opinion. Infield is just one measure of someone's competency. Having picture, if someone had like 
a whole bunch of pictures with girls and hookup situations and no infield, I, I would still count them as legitimate, to be honest, right? Infield helps show, demonstrate their game from start to finish, um, but receipts are very important as well, and testimonials are very important as well. So really, ideally, someone needs all of them, and I have all those in, in huge quantities, more so than the whole rest of the industry combined. So, And that wasn't a true statement when Bradicus was around, but with him out, I can comfortably say that. Um, Jim Game, I have a whole video on that. I'm not going to get into that right now, but there's a, a specific strategy. Um, I have a video on picking up girls in, in class and school as well. But but just to give you a quick overview with the gym one, um, you want to. I usually go in with an appearance opener. Hey, I like that tattoo. What is that? Hey, I like, you know, that style of hair, your outfit, whatever. And then introduce yourself, set up a date. You're not going to be like pouring it on thick. You're not going to be mass approaching at the gym either. You want to keep a low profile. All that's covered in the in the video. Um, with the shit in class, just go fucking talk to her and ask her to go out on a date. It's that simple. Even if you've waited, go just fucking do it next time you see her. Um, you usually want to isolate the girl within the first two to three minutes. Are you going to make any more videos on Derek Moneyberg? Uh, no. For those that weren't aware, he attempted, well, not attempted, he sued me for alleged defamation. I made some comments about his business and business practices, and he was asking for $6 million. Okay, the judge, this was in Nevada, the judge has dismissed that case, um, and all my parties have been dismissed out of that case. And now he's appealing in Nevada, which will have a very low chance of winning. Uh, and that's all I'll say about that. But for the time being, I will not be making any more videos on that lovely individual. You seem extremely focused on the game. You remind me of Kobe. Hopefully I don't die in a helicopter accident. How do you get away from the game? What do you like to do in your non-banging hours during the day? Um, I like to go to the gym, uh, watch funny shit, hang out with Liz and the dogs, hang out with friends, go to restaurants, listen to music, learn shit read intellectual stuff I, I have a lot of stuff that i do um but you know i have to text a lot to keep the whole machine running i have to see rotation girls every day i work on a lot of business stuff too um but yeah i mean i think anyone that really mastered a craft to the level that i did or, or that kobe bryant did or you have to be obsessed with it you have to be um you know, it has to consume you in a way which this has. And, you know, there's pros and cons to that, but, uh, you know, you have, you have to have extreme drive to take it to the heights that I took it. And to me, this is like my favorite thing. So, you know, chess and poker were really fun too from a skill game optimization standpoint. But there's something more satisfying. Like I told Josh and Connor last night, like I just fucking like cream pie this nine five last night. Like perfect body, perfect face, really nice, really good sex. And she's like in love with me and all this shit. And and I, and I was just, I was like, I, I texted them after. I'm like, dude, I was like, I wonder how much of the how much of this we do like for ego because you just feel like a god when you like rail a perfect looking chick and she's like eating out of the palm of your hand. I'm like, I wonder how much this is like ego driven. And and I was like, and you know, an orgasm is essentially like they found it's the same brain pathways as like heroin. So I was like, maybe we're just like fucking narcissistic, like heroin addicts, you know, doing like safe heroin in the form of plowing hot chicks. Um, 
I don't know. But that's more exhilarating than you know, like winning winning a pot in poker or winning a tournament in poker or like winning a chess match. Like having I don't know, you I don't know if it's biologically driven or what, but you know, being able to fuck hot girls and, and a lot of hot girls, um, I haven't found anything more entertaining. We just leave it at that. Um, let's see. <laughs> this guy's making trolling comments. Is it okay to lay on the sidewalk? As RSD Max Tornov told everybody to do, do more crab dances in the club to be more confident. Uh, no. Don't do not do retarded shit. Don't believe in the idea of state. Um... What do you think about how to beast game? I think it blows. I've reviewed it a bunch of times. It sucks. It's not even, he's lacking a whole bunch of basic fundamentals. Like he did a session in one of the videos I reviewed where he like went and got destroyed on the streets of Miami a bunch. Um, and then he's like, yeah, I don't really like Miami. It's like, dude, your game just sucks. Uh, you can't blame the city. You're just a fucking dumbass. Like you can tell he's like nervous and scared and shit in the interactions and he even admits to that. He's like, Yeah, I wasn't feeling it. Like it's like, okay, you can do steroids and, and fucking, you know, make little like cut scenes of you eating at restaurants and shit and, and doing like little gym montages with your steroids. That doesn't make you good with chicks. Like no production value or, or that's that's where these guys go wrong. It's like but people don't realize the technical game blows. That's that's the that's the unfortunate <clears throat> part that's missing for people. I think they get captivated by this, you know, like high production almost like supplants the fact that their game sucks. It's like, oh look, he's he, there's dubstep and when, when there's drone footage, this is great. It's, it's like, yeah, pay no attention to what's happening over here, which is like horrible, cold approach. Um, <laughs> FedEx Field is a good example of good looks, money, status, but no game. Can't talk properly. Yeah. Um, I think the photo rating service right now is 697, but, but book one of the calls here or in the pin chat. Uh, that includes like a 38 page guide of exactly how to get your pictures taken, plus a whole bunch of example past successful client photos with rationale of why they worked so well um and our hot girl team rating the picking the top five photos from your photo shoot and i write your bio personally for you um josh can usually only come live on the weekends might maybe we'll fit one in this weekend not sure yet Yeah, sure. Um, it might even be useful. I see you on a bunch of my lives and you, and you benefited a lot from the products. And it might even be useful for you to come on the stream at some point. Email me and we can set that up um, just to talk about your progression and how the products contributed to, you know, multiplying the results. Um, just email me at john at com and if, if you're comfortable with coming on the channel, you, we can make that happen. Um, What new innovations could you get from Paul Jenka? He's super articulate, explains everything super well. Yeah, he's an intellectual powerhouse. Um, the guy got a physics degree from Harvard. That's, that's extremely impressive to me. Um, if you look at who scores the best on graduate placement exams, whether it be the LSAT, the GMAT, the GRE, it's philosophy and physics majors. Paul did a physics major. I did a philosophy major. Um, they notoriously are, have the brightest people in it. And we both took a analytical systems approach. 
he's you know he's moved far beyond that life now and, and is raising a family and good for him you know that's what he decided to do um i'll never i'll never stop the game um i'll never retire you know from from teaching this stuff i just love it too much i, I can't i can't imagine stopping um and he and he still teaches in other ways he helps guys transition from the player life and the, and the casual dating life to a, a you know a more fulfilling relationship or, or marriage um but yeah we'll, we'll we'll see if we can um what we can bounce back and forth with te from a technical game perspective when he comes on uh november 12th Well, this hot blonde with fake tits wants to get railed tonight. Chaotas. Uh, okay. If a girl doesn't text back, do you reckon you can call her? No, you should almost never call. It's only for very special situations. And there's other ways to deal with them not responding um i don't know if paul at his peak was better than my day game i'm I'm still pretty good at day game i just don't really like it that much because there's a lot of downtime like if you were to go out and do two hours or three hours of, of day game on the street the vast majority of the time you'd be doing nothing but walking and that's why I don't like it. It's like a um, inefficiency nightmare, right? Like in a night game, remember opportunity cost that I that I've been droning on about. Why would you go spend three hours walking around the streets when you could be three hours in a club, constantly in interactions? That's specifically why I don't like day game that much. Um, <clears throat> But I still am very good at it, and, and you should still cultivate the skill so that when you do see a pretty girl, when you're out and about doing other shit, that you can make shit happen. Many have gotten HIV from doing it once vaginally. I just told you the stat. Uh, one in 2050, or sorry, one, one in 1,250, okay? 1,250, one time. So that would be like banging one girl with HIV 1,250 times. You'd get it once statistically. Or if you banged 1,250 girls that all had HIV unprotected, you'd get it once. That's just very statistic statistically unlikely. So I don't know where you're talking. Many have gotten it like that, uh, but I think you're going to scare guys unnecessarily. I'm proof. I went raw on, on a ton of them, on on most of them, and I didn't get it. But again, don't it, you don't need to listen to any any one person's anecdotal experience. It's it's all about statistics. So. It, it's not it's not that you're going to get it one in 1250 times it's it's like look at it this way if you were to bang a bunch of girls raw you could have like 1250 free cards if you happen to run into a girl that had hiv but hardly anybody has hiv in the first place which again i don't want to go too deep into this because people will take this shit out of context and be like Oh, he's encouraging men to get AIDS or something. You know, I'm just saying, look at the fucking stats and make your own opinion about what you want to do. Okay. If, and, and you can, you, here's some like practical things you can do to like decrease, decrease the risk further. Don't do raw anal ever. Number one, because the risk goes up 10 X with raw anal. So just don't do raw anal with anybody. Number two, if a girl is like, in the rave scene or you know maybe shooting drugs potentially 
or in like a skeevy scene like a stripper use a condom okay or if she seems like a big slut which is very rare use a condom and i wouldn't worry about it to be honest yes it can happen but you can also get hit by a car when you cross the street right people still cross the street <clears throat> um What's the quickest way to increase your lay count over five years? Number one, uh, be trained on all my shit, right? Know my system inside out because it's all the optimal moves. Number two, do massive amounts of outsourcing for lead acquisition and lead management. So you'd have a bunch of people running your Tinders and your Bumbles. You'd have multiple profiles and you'd have people working the leads down to just mass stack your calendar with dates. So the goal would be to fill up all your free time with, you know, again, this has diminishing returns, of course, um, unless you want to be, you know, fucking all day long, but you're, you're talking for, from like an, uh, you know, hypothetical maximization function standpoint so i'm giving you the, the true answer um you would be armed with ideal strategy optimal strategy which is my system and then you would outsource all the time that it takes to acquire tinder leads and bumble leads and have them work be worked down into dates and ideally you would even add in a screen so that you weren't meeting up with girls that weren't down and that's it yeah, I did a video about how you could bang a thousand in a year and it talks precisely about that. It's about like mass acquiring online leads using other people as resources. And again, you'd be using my scripts once you get a match and once you get a, a phone number and then you just mass set dates from that. And, and there's the only thing that would limit you is, is the amount of time you can fuck in a day really. The great RST Jeffy once said, there's physical and temporal limits to how much you can fuck. Um, yeah, I, I work I work the vasectomy into almost every conversation in the lead up to having sex. So like date straight to the house, we're chatting. Um, oh, I have a vasectomy, by the way, I can't have kids. Oh, really? Yeah, so like if I were to like come inside you, you can't get pregnant, it's impossible. Oh, interesting. And then once you get into the escalation, that goes out the window. And I, and I usually have recent test results on my phone. Hey, I also have recent test results showing I'm clean. They almost never want you to prove it, but I can prove it if they want, they want me to. That's it. Um... How can you approach a girl while she's dancing at the club? You have to yell in her ear and you have to get her attention. So you tap them on the, on the shoulder or otherwise get them to focus on you. Hey, and then you're literally like shouting into their ear. Okay. It's loud as fuck on the dance floor and she's distracted. So I just do a quick introduction. Hey, I, I wanted to meet you really fast. Come to the bar with me. I'm instantly trying to isolate them. Okay, you don't have time to get to know them there while they're in the middle of dancing with like pounding loud as fuck music that's like drowning out most of what you're saying. <clears throat> um, and you want to instant isolate. That's that's the move on the dance floor. Don't try to game them on the dance floor. That's a, a huge fucking time sink and misconception. Oh, I have so many clients that are like, oh, I just need to take dancing lessons, right? And then I'll be able to dance with them and then they'll go home. No, that's not how it works. Um, what's the hot spots in Orlando? Uh, there's a place called um, is it Mangoes? There's like a fucking Latin club with multiple rooms. I was in Orlando from the 21 convention. I pulled a Costa Rican chick, hooked up with her, <laughs> hooked up with her after the club, and her friend was so upset because apparently the girl was married or something like that. <clears throat> but um, yeah, it's a big Latin dancing club. I'm pretty sure it's called Mangoes, but there's also multiple Hooters in, in, um, in Orlando, which is prime pickings for hired guns. Uh, 
have you played with any other apps for blah, 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 besides face up um yeah nothing does as good as face up it's just mark still running away from debating you that was never a thing i that was never uh, on the table he made like a childish response to me making fun of his game because his game in a nutshell is basically like this hi i'm justin i'm from canada i love you want to get married that's pretty much his entire game rising intonation cheesy lines extreme like cart before the horse shit aka let's get married and i love you like on the opener and that's why he called me for coaching in 2018 and i told him to go fuck himself and he told me he hadn't gotten to 100 lake count yet what a surprise those tactics seem pretty solid to me you gotta love it how all the uh the coaches in the space like justin mark and, and myron Gaines, come to me for help to actually learn in game if only we could trade fucking popularity counts me and myron and have it correlate to skill instead of correlate to nonsense um have you had any all right let me answer this one first have you had any, the ai for tinder yeah we're, we're working on a ai program to auto source leads and auto set up dates and it's been mostly done for like a month or two we we're still more quality assurance testing happening on it for for edge cases and stuff like that we want it to be pretty robust before releasing a mass market so um i'm hoping we're within a couple months hopefully by the end of the year but I want it to be extremely good um, before we release it. And and it will be even very beneficial for me. But the goal is it will run your Tinder and not be detected as a bot. And it will just run, all, it will do all the swiping for you and all the Tinder messaging. And then when it takes phone numbers, it'll do all the texting for you. But we're still, you know, there's going to be like legal potential legal ramifications and stuff like that. We have to indemnify ourselves completely um because it's going to be something talking on the guy on the person's behalf you know so that that's potentially that adds liability right <clears throat> we we don't know what it, what the thing is going to say and it could get people into situations potentially and stuff like that you know i don't know um let's say that it offends a girl and the girl reports the guy and his account gets banned and, and he had a premium service and he can't access it now who's liable let's say that you know it sets him up with a date with a girl that's fucking nuts and she does something crazy to him i don't i don't fucking know i'm just i'm just uh spitballing here but well you know we'll we'll do the best we can with it and and we'll we'll release it when the time comes but it's going to be a monthly uh service where, where you pay and it, and it just runs shit have you heard john elite yeah there's a lot of people that say a lot of stuff online that kid's a little asian dork who thinks he's like some game god it's pathetic um all right have you come up with any recent large changes to your systems online or offline no not recently um and that's because it's it's already been so finely tuned optimized there's little tweaks here and there sometimes um but the overall system has has remained largely unchanged over the past couple of years uh, supplements to naturally boost testosterone uh boron is one of the biggest ones look that up is rsc madison still calling him the michael jordan pickup um, I don't know, or I don't care, but I made a pretty funny video mocking his fake retirement. Um, and I heard QB, QB passport flexing just ripped Madison. I didn't watch that, but I heard that happened. Just funny. Nobody even cares about Madison. He's like, if you ask any coach in the space, who's the best that ever did it? They're all going to say me. It's like, really? I don't, I can't imagine one person ever saying that. But again, everybody, you know, talks a big game and, and thinks they're the best. 
Talk is cheap in this space. <laughs> is raw backdoor okay if you think the girl is pure or virgin? Yeah. It's not that every girl that you bang raw in the ass is going to have AIDS, but it's just a risk factor that gets 10 x in the case that she does. How long were your balls swollen after the vasectomy? Um, it feels for a few days like you got kicked in the nuts. It's not that bad, though. And then you have like your balls in like an athletic supporter and they're like a little sore for a week and then, and then it's not a big deal anymore. Um, to get a girl to make a movie with you, I, I just tell them it'd be cool to film ourselves so we can masturbate to this later. I'm not going to send it to my friends. And that uh, usually works because they're, they're just worried about it getting sent around. And they're a lot more comfortable if their face isn't in it. So I'll be like, you can ride backwards or you know, co otherwise cover your face somehow. Um, yeah, I have a ton of videos with a lot of girls. But it's cool. Like, if you make a good video with them, and they'll like masturbate to it all the time. They'll be like, "Hey, I'm watching our video again," and I'll be like, "Hey, I'm fucking another girl." Um, let's see. You said it's okay to double text on occasion. I double and triple text every day. I double and triple text all the fucking time. And this these stupid, stupid rules. That's another one of the big piece of misinformation out there. Oh, you can never double text because you look needy. Okay, well, this needy guy is cleaning up fucking tons of hot girls all the time. And my advanced friends are doing the same with double texting. Think about the alternative. If a girl doesn't respond and you don't text her again, Time is passing, killing the lead. Your text thread is now getting buried further in a queue, and you are stalemating. Congrats, you're being the non-needy guy, and now the lead dies, and you never see that girl again. Good job. You showed her. Okay, and I'm not saying, oh, go simp for her, or, you know, these dumb fucking terms. Go be a kiss ass or anything like that. It's just naturally falling up because people get busy, and it's usually nothing personal. That's what I've found. It's just usually nothing personal. Your message got buried with a ton of other messages and she forgot. People are busy. People do other shit. You're not the only person messaging her. It's totally fine to follow up and for her to see the message and respond when she's not busy. So not only is it okay to double text, but you should be doing it all the time. And there's ways to do it where you don't look needy and desperate, which is what people automatically assume. So I'm not just doing it on occasion. I'm doing it all the time. And it's a, a very good strategy and a necessary thing that you have to do. <laughs> what can I do if I'm insecure about my D? It affects my confidence a lot. I don't know. I, I really don't. I mean, I get clients with small cocks and they're like hi i have a small dick what do i do i don't fucking know uh you can't change that so you know try to get over it try to learn sexual techniques that are still going to rock the girl if you if your dick is too small to you know penetrate her properly get good at eating pussy buy a hitachi vibrator you can still rock the chick hard if you don't have a big dick or a regular dick, whatever. Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's a instructor for the company Real Social Dynamics who rebranded as Self Mastery Co. And he's a fucking loser. And and he he told a story about like being sexually taken advantage of him. Not him taking advantage of a girl sexually. Him being sexually violated, which I think he... What 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 it sounds like is that he got fucked in the ass. Like, basically, like, ass raped. And, I, and again, I, I think we can laugh at that because um, it's him. You know, I'm not saying it's a good thing in general by any means, but it, he got, like, drugged in Colombia and, like, sexually taken advantage of, which is kind of hilarious. Um... <clears throat> He made a video about it. 
<laughs> um, and I hope somebody shows them that clip from this stream. If you're a Madison fan or, or have a way to get a hold of them, send them send them that send them this stream with a timestamp so he can. John Anthony said that it's funny that I was violated in the ass. Yeah, of course. It's hilarious. Okay. Let's wrap up here. I gotta go to the gym. Closed eight girls since I bought your program in June. All online. 30 lay count right now. 29 Sunday was certified nine blonde Betty. Good job. The first nine typically comes closer to 50 lay count, but you're ahead of the curve. Um, let's see. June. June, July, August, September. Okay. Closing about two a month. Can definitely go a little bit quicker. Think about joining the mentorship. We can give you your money back that you paid for the for Occam's or Leads Machine and put it towards the mentorship. We can easily get you to do um, four to eight a month instead of two a month with proper coaching. And, and you should be doing some cold approach in there too. Cold approach closes. But anyways, good job. Um. Yeah, exactly. The problem is is that you have a whole bunch of fucking dumbasses that don't know how the game works that go and speak about it theoretically. Okay, uh, if a high-value man is high-value, uh, he doesn't do anything to supplicate, and so he would never send a double text because that looks needy. Okay, never double text. And everyone's like, okay, I'm never going to do that. And, and then when girls inevitably stall, which they do all the fucking time, you lose all those girls. Great strategy. You know, you showed them. Zerka's dodging a streamer who wants to box him. It's because he has no fighting abilities. He's admitted on camera he was never trained in any martial art, including boxing. And when I challenged him for the record, I didn't even know that. I thought that he had fighting abilities because he because he's always bragging that he's the best fighter. But I still was confident that I would beat him. And then it came out where where he was saying that he never has been trained in martial arts and, and that his fights as a bouncer were just fueled by pure aggression from, you know, massively overloading on steroids and rat poison. Huh. Cool. Um, you do a video about rating girls. I'm not sure how to rate properly. It's subjective, but you know there's a general level of understanding that hot girls are hot and ugly girls are ugly. So I would just say, like, you know, a ten is like can't be improved at all. That's why I I more often use the term nine five because it they're still like okay, her butt could be a little bigger, her face could be a little better her tits could be a little nicer. You know, there's usually something that could be improved on every girl. Um, and then, you know, a seven really should define like the bare minimum threshold for how a girl should look as being acceptable to bang. Like a six should be something you don't bang. I mean, that's how I define that stuff. Um, and again, that could be different for each guy, but um, five obviously is like middle of the road and average, and below a five is reserved for the the dating coaches and the red pill coaches, girlfriends and wives. Ironically, right? these these self proclaimed world class experts teaching everyone how to do this stuff have girls that I wouldn't touch with a ten foot pole, that I would never even bang for any amount of money, even if no one knew. Okay, but that's who they make is their, you know, end product achievement after a, a lifetime of game. Let's get a round of applause for that, for all the, you know, Ryan Stone, Donovan Sharp laying the pipe on, on twos, which used to be on the low till I blasted it out online and showed everybody that they're, they're railing out twos. Um, those are some pretty cool guys. Especially when they when they tell that two that she can't look at anyone in public and that they're going to order their food for her. Let's get a round of applause for that as well. Nice job, guys. You really 
you're really killing it. Um, <laughs> God. Yeah, probably true. I mean, someone said he admitted to being bisexual at a free tour. And he said on camera that he's gay at least 20 times. He really fucking pulled the wool over everybody's eyes, didn't he? <laughs> My uncle kept on following up with a beautiful woman who used to show little interest. Ten years later, they're happily married with a kid. Yeah, the hottest ones, you have to fucking follow up way more and be way more persistent because they have endless options. And they have other high-value guys and other cool guys and everyone and their fucking brother hitting them up. And so you have to be a little bit more persistent until you get your fucking shot at them. And then you better be fucking well-equipped and not make many mistakes or you're going to fucking lose her. So that's why you learn this shit. It's precisely why you learn this shit. <laughs> put a gay ringtone to remind me about shit um all right cool paul Jenka just texted me he confirmed november 12th for coming on the channel so that'll be two weeks from sunday and it will be at twelve p m eastern but I'll, I'll, you'll see the video get put out in advance. Paul Jenka, November 12th, 5 p.m. Sorry, 12 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. England time. Okay. He already did make a program called Boss. All right. We, we hit through the questions. Uh, <laughs> that's it for now. Um. <sighs> Oh, well, I mean, it is fun, right? Talking about all these fucking people. I just hope we fucking scale the company soon so I don't, so I don't have to be, you know. It's it's annoying, to be honest, watching watching these guys parade around, watching the circus that goes on in this industry. Um, like I said, not in a million years would you see a, a guy that was shitty at basketball or shitty at fighting, uh, you know, starring and, and leading the show in the NBA or the UFC, right? But in this space, all you have to do is know the right people and make a lot of noise and have your marketing on point and you'll get featured everywhere, okay? And then it says nothing, 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 nothing about your expertise or qualifications at all. And that should scare you. And, you know, it is what it is. And I try to make people aware through hundreds of videos technically dismantling guys dumb views on different shit <clears throat> but you know hopefully one day i'm one of the one of the popular guys that can help people on a, on a bigger scale um <clears throat> until then i'll be uh i'll be here dropping dropping value on youtube all right but I think we're going to actually start a, um, start repurposing a lot of the YouTube content onto some podcasts and shit. I was talking to some guys about that, putting it on Spotify and Apple and stuff like that. Um, and then it goes a bunch of other places too, just repurposing a bunch of, there's like 2,500 videos on the channel now. I've been pumping content out like a machine for like six years. I've um, been doing the daily videos now for, for a few years, I think. But, all right, everybody take care. I'm going to go to the gym, relax a bit with Liz. We'll plow a blonde stunner with fake tits and get a blowjob from another really hot girl who can't fuck because she's on her period. But enjoy the rest of your day, everyone. If you are ready to come over to the other side and start living a life full of hot girls and get the problem solved permanently, we have the best solution in the industry backed by the most evidence in the industry. So you don't have to just take my opinion on it. We have a proof page that's in the link of every video. 
including this one, you can go look at with over a thousand testimonials. Okay. And I promise that you're not an exception. You're not any different, despite feeling that maybe you're too short or too ethnic or too old, or you don't have enough money, or you're not attractive enough, or you're too shy, or you're a virgin or on a dry spell and you think you're different, it won't work for you. I've seen all those situations and every other possible one you can imagine. And we get them all very good, very, very fast. Okay, you won't be an exception. I know it seems like you will be and that it won't work for you. And that's how everybody thinks when they come on. And we change that around in one week. So don't delay. Go book one of the calls. And I'm looking forward to helping a bunch of you guys soon. Okay. Thank you, everybody. And stay tuned for uh, today's YouTube video. We'll drop it. Um, shortly after this live ends here so look out for that um and always you know as always please like and and comment as much as possible because that helps push the videos in our shadow band channel okay thank you guys until next